Switzerland is regarded as one of the cleanest countries in the world. Business Times recently ranked Zurich and Lausanne among the ten most livable cities worldwide. So does this mean the Swiss don't produce any waste? Of course, the Swiss also produce waste. Quite a lot of it, in fact. In terms of residential waste, around 400 kilograms per person. But we recycle 200 kilograms of this. People sort their waste at home, separating out metal, cardboard, paper, clothes, shoes. There are no fewer than 21 products and materials that can be collected and brought for recycling. The other half is taken to waste to energy plants and incinerated. The newest waste to energy plant serves the region around Lucerne and was commissioned in 2015. It's called Renegia, reflecting the idea of recovering energy from waste. You have a lot of energy recovery, as the name says, waste to energy plants. We have about 700 kilowatt hours of electricity per ton and we have 1.5 megawatt hours of heat per ton of waste that we treat. Together that gives us the high energy value. Waste to energy plants are now the third largest producers of electricity in Switzerland, accounting for just under 4% of the power generated, after nuclear and hydroelectric. It's been forbidden to dispose of combustible household waste in landfill in Switzerland since 2000. Part of the reason it has been completely prohibited since then is that a better solution has been found. And the solution is waste to energy. You don't have any methane emissions which have a very high greenhouse potential and we don't have the leakage water problem uh, that gives the contamination to the groundwater. At a waste to energy plant, the first step in the process is delivery. We already get an idea of how sophisticated modern technology is with under pressure in the plant preventing odor emissions. The waste is delivered and stored in a bunker, is mixed and then is fed into the, into the incinerators. We have two incineration lines. The incinerator has a temperature of about 1000 degrees Celsius and only needs air. You don't need any external energy to, to, to burn rubbish because uh, the energy content is high enough that the material burns itself. In the boiler, we produce steam, high-pressure steam, as it is produced in a coal power plant and then brought to a steam turbine where we can generate electricity. In addition to 29.5 megawatts of electricity, the plant produces 32 megawatts of heat, supplying cheap power and district heating for some 38,000 households in the region. Moreover, Renegia provides the neighboring paper factory with process steam all year round. This saves the equivalent of 40,000 tons of oil or 700 train carloads of fossil fuels every year. Effective incineration doesn't just have an impact on energy efficiency. It's also the first step toward ensuring optimal flue gas treatment and low emissions. This third, it's about a third of the, of the plant, is the flue gas treatment system where the the acidic fumes and the dust of the flue gases are removed in several steps. Here in the first step, we see, the, the, first step, we see the electrostatic precipitator. This is where the solid particles are taken out of the flue gas. The flue gas then passes to the fabric filter. In the fabric filter, more than 99% of the gaseous flue gas components are taken out by injection of additives such as lime or bicarbonate. Here we are at the catalyst, where the remaining components of the flue gas are neutralized.
In the final step, the clean flue gases are cooled and released via the stack at a temperature of around 80 degrees Celsius. There is no smoke coming out of our, our chimneys. What you see is the steam coming out of the stacks. And you only see it in, in low temperature. When it is warmer than 13 degrees Celsius, you don't see anything. The emissions of a modern waste or energy plants are irrelevant uh, compared to other emissions that you have out of coal power plants, uh, from the traffic, from heating systems, uh, from ships. The emissions are negligible. The plants are constantly monitored on an automated basis and checked by us. The technology is state-of-the-art, delivering values that are all well below the limits imposed in Switzerland. This latest cutting-edge technology restricts the level of nitrogen, for example, to just 40 milligrams per cubic meter of exhaust air, half the permitted limit. These checks are in everyone's interests. And there is no, absolutely no danger of people living around us. Uh, in Europe, these waste to energy plants, big waste to energy plants, are situated normally in the middle of the cities. Paris, Hamburg, Berlin, uh, Zurich, uh, Vienna. Waste to energy is broadly accepted in Switzerland and has become fairly well established. Plants are now no longer a problem in terms of air or noise pollution. In Switzerland, waste to energy has established itself as a key component of modern hygienic waste management. Rather than being seen as an alternative to recycling, it has become part of the recycling process and an important part of that. Basically, it's best to avoid producing waste in the first place. But if our consumption does result in a lot of waste, we have to ensure that we give it a second life. In other words, we have to recycle and recover energy. As part of this process, we should concentrate our efforts on not producing any pollutants and not wasting any energy. In terms of air and noise pollution, I really would have no problem living next to a waste-to-energy plant.